doing our work on dynamic program analysis, um, which we uh, partly developed in the scope of the Ashley project. Um, it's focusing on managed language runtimes. That means on software written in managed languages, such as in Java or Scala. Um, such languages have the benefit of increasing developer productivity and making maintenance easier. The languages provide a lot of features that uh, make it easier to design applications to be extensible, for example. And uh, Java also has its uh, relevance in the context of real-time systems. There has been a real-time specification for Java out since the early 2000 years, which has been revised in, uh, I think, 2004 and 2006. And recently, there is also a working group on um, safety-critical um, Java technology specification. So dynamic problem analysis plays an important role when developing software because it allows, for example, to um, detect uh, defects. And the analysis provides results that are important for fixing and for optimizing the code. So they are uh, important in the software development lifecycle. To de create them with very little development effort. Our uh, approach is based on instrumentation techniques. That means uh, we modify existing program code. In this case, it's a bytecode for the Java virtual machine or for Android Stalbeck virtual machine to inject particular instructions that will um, intercept events of interest and um, pass these events on to the analysis to process them. So the instrumented application then is also called the event producer and the analysis is called the event consumer. There are a lot of different tools for bytecode instrumentation. We can classify them along two dimensions, the ease of use and how concisely we can express instrumentation tasks and the flexibility or expressiveness. So which kind of analysis can be expressed with the tools. One end of the spectrum is a library like ASM, which is uh, widely used, very popular. It allows you to express any kind of instrumentation, um, but one needs to know a lot about details about bytecode and the resulting instrumentation implementation uh, is very verbose and also hard to maintain, therefore. On the other end of the spectrum would be an aspect-oriented programming languages such as AspectJ, which allows one to model analysis tasks as cross-cutting concern and to weave them into the relevant parts of the application. Here we can express some analysis very concisely, but many relevant analysis cannot be expressed, for example, because the join point model supported by AspectJ is way too restrictive. So we are talking something here in the writer up corner where we have ease of use and we have expressiveness and flexibility. In addition, we have two more goals. We want to ensure complete coverage. We want to intercept any instruction that gets executed from the startup of a virtual machine until its termination. And we want to achieve also isolation to avoid interference with the observed program. That's a common issue that when you analyze your application, you actually upgrade artifacts in the workload and uh, the observation doesn't really represent anymore the original system. So we try also to tackle this kind of observer effects. Uh, a first uh, solution has been proposed um, in the framework called Diesel, which is now open source. It's also endorsed by the SPEC research group, so it went through a very thorough reviewing process. It's a domain-specific language for instrumentation that we embedded in Java, and it takes a lot of inspiration from aspect-oriented programming, but it's dedicatedly designed for observation, that is, uh, the, the analysis logic will not interfere with the control flow of and with the state of the base program. It's built on top of ASM and it's extensible in many ways. And it achieves actually um, the goal I showed before. So it allows you to express any form of analysis in a concise way, very similar to aspect J. But it falls short regarding the other requirements, complete code coverage of the analysis and prevention of perturbations um, of interference between the analysis and the observed workloads. The problem here is that when you perform instrumentation-based analysis, you inject code, and if you do that with complete code coverage, it's not sufficient to put the code into the application classes, but you need to put them also in the core class libraries. And the code in general might actually make use of some features of these core libraries. So the core libraries are shared between the base program and the analysis that's happening at a meta level. 
And um, the Java class library is not reentrant. It hasn't been designed for reentrance, so you can run into all kinds of problems, uh, including state corruption, deadlocks, and so on. To address this issue, we developed the Shadow VM, which allows us to asynchronously and remotely execute analysis in a way that is isolated from the observed based program. And also there's a dedicated programming model that makes it very easy to attach, for example, state to objects that's needed by many analysis tasks. So we see then the dynamic analysis as a distributed event processing system where the instrumented, instrumented code is creating events through some low level API. So this code is all automatically generated. Um, it's using um, Java native interface calls. That means the red instructions here, the inserted instructions, actually will not make use of any uh, Java level features, but only of lower level uh, features and therefore not interfere um, with the Java um, class library. And then the event consumers happen in a separate process. This is also beneficial if you want to analyze uh, on resource constraint devices. Some analysis is great uh, terabytes of data and you can only execute them on big servers. So it's quite important to decouple the observed system from the analysis. Here, I show you the architecture of our Shadow VM. It consists of basically of three processes. There is the observed process that gets instrumented where we want to obtain information about uh, what's happening. We have a dedicated instrumentation server with uh, instrumentation framework. This is more or less the diesel framework where the user provides uh, custom instrumentation logic. And then we have the analysis server that will actually intercept the events that are generated in the observed process and uh, will perform the analysis tasks on them. And the interesting thing is that we can attach multiple observed virtual machines to our instrumentation server and analysis server. And these virtual machines can be standard Java virtual machines or they can be Android Dalvik virtual machines. We are actually providing the first instrumentation framework for Android that is able to instrument also core libraries and that is uh, generic, not, not limited to a particular single analysis. And uh, we can write the analysis code and the instrumentation logic only once and it will um, directly support the Java virtual machine and Android Stalvik virtual machine. So no de extra development effort is needed for an analysis to, to make it deployable on a different platform. We support various kinds of events that can be intercepted in the observed virtual machine. Most of them are given through libraries that are often needed and can be easily reused, but we also support custom events by specifying them using the diesel ups, uh, DSL language. And then we have a uh, VM events that are generated by our infrastructure regarding the life cycle, for example, when a process starts or terminates, when a thread starts or terminates, and when an object is deallocated. These deallocation events are very important because they allow us to typically um, compact some state in the event consumer logic. And then we have uh, inter-process communication events, which are particularly important on Android because Android applications are like distributed systems consisting of multiple processes. And it's very important to be able to keep track of the inter-process um, control flow. Therefore, we need actually also to provide dedicated events to intercept that. Also, our platform supports different event ordering. There is, of course, um, global ordering where um, it happens before relationship in the observed VM can be, can be retained for the analysis. But for many analysis, this is actually not needed and we can do something more efficiently. We can also do per thread ordering where we have a separate event buffer for each thread and we only preserve happens before relations within thread. For some analysis tasks, this is sufficient and it requires less synchronization, therefore incurs less overhead. And then we have various customizable orderings. So when an event is sent that in this case carries a payload of an object, a class, and an int primitive value, then the event will be reified in the Shadow VM um, presenting a payload of shadow object, shadow class, and the, and the int passed. So objects are mapped to shadow objects. There's a dedicated API for that. Identities will be preserved. That means if an object is sent in multiple events, 
then it will be represented by the same shadow object instance on the shadow VM. And this API provides us reflective information, for example, and it makes it very easy to attach shadow state to shadow objects with this get state and set state methods. So this is illustrated here. You can very easily attach some state. So we have a full multiprocess support. We can attach multiple um, observed VMs to our shadow VM, which is the event consumer. And each of these VM processes can be represented by a separate shadow space to provide some uh, isolation between them. We can also process them together, which is important when anal analyzing distributed systems and the happens before relations between components in the distributed systems do matter. But in some cases, we want to keep the events separated. Then we can use a feature of shadow spaces. And then we have to take care that uh, in Android, uh, is Applications are multi-process systems, and uh, processes are not started from scratch, but they are forked from existing processes, from a cycled process, um, which already has initialized data, and there might be associated shadow data. So if this forking happens, then we also need to create the forking at the shadow space level, which is also fully supported by our framework. So a, a big strength is here that Existing analysis will support Android out of the box. No dedicated development is necessary. A minor uh, issue is that Android and Java have different bytecode formats, and we make uh, them transparent by actually translating between these representations. And that means that some low-level metrics, for example, regarding basic block sizes, might be slightly perturbed when analyzing on Android. A uh, bigger issue is that Android actually has no interface to uh, observe what's happening. There's no tooling interface like in the Java virtual machine, so we had to implement the corresponding logic uh, from scratch. And this was uh, published um, this year at Modularity Conference, which is our first publication in, in the scope of this project. We casted already we casted a lot of existing tools like calling context profilers, code coverage testing tools, object lifetime profilers, field immutability checkers, and so on. And we also created some Android-specific analysis, um, mostly for de demonstrating the features of the platform. Here, just an example of two tools, the original one, and then the recasted one using the Shadow VM. The first tool here shown is Chacoco, which is a well-known uh, testing uh, system, code coverage testing. and the original Chacoco, for example, doesn't support full coverage, so you cannot really test the coverage of core libraries. So it's not of use for the developers of the class library in this case. Um, ours supports that out of the box. And ours is much more concisely implemented. The original Chacoco has 1,389 plus 570 lines of code. Ours is 281 and 82 lines of code for exactly the same functionality. For Chacoco, actually, we excluded uh, particular features like uh, printing, party printing reports, so that really these numbers are exactly comparable. Then a much more complex tool is Elephant Tracks, a heavyweight analysis that really needs a server for execution, even for small workloads, that will track every object allocation and every access to objects to create uh, histograms of object lifetimes, which can be used for well, better understanding the workload and for optimizing and tuning, for example, garbage collection. And the original Elephant Tracks supports only Java 1.6. It doesn't support Android at all. And it's implemented in 6,668 and 2,770 lines of code. Our version is much more concise, just 608 and 1,628 lines of code. It supports JVM without restrictions. It supports also the Dalek VM out of the box. So this shows some of the benefits. And uh, these numbers are taken from a recent magazine um, that has been accepted but is not yet uh, published in IEEE software magazine. Finally, I want to show you an example of an Android-specific analysis, which was just demonstrated last week at Splash conference. Um, in this case here, we took just a third-party uh, application that is not distributed in source code, just in binary code. And we run it, and it creates actually several processes and makes use of different components of the platform. And it uses permission in a certain, certain way. And we wanted here to show that with a very simple analysis, we can actually keep track about uh, the use of permissions and find out where exactly and when the certain permissions are being used. 
And this is tricky because the use of permission is actually checked in a different process than it's requested on, so there are some multiple levels of inter-process communication happening. But with our framework, it's very easy to recreate the inter-process inter, um, procedural control flow within processes and across processes. And for example, we find then out exactly um, where certain permission is being used and what's actually the call stack of that use. And interestingly also the application could do whatever to, to hide its use of permissions. It could use obfuscation, it could use reflection. It doesn't matter, our analysis will find any use of, uh, of, of permissions. And then the same application also uh, sends network traffic and there are many different ways of sending things over the network. So there are many different APIs. But since we can instrument also the core libraries with our framework, and it's the only framework that is able to do that, we can simply uh, instrument the IO bridge and which will track any uh, network communication. And we can, in this case, inspect, for example, the data send, and we find out that here the application sends uh, sensitive information about the device, such as the device ID is being sent here to a server. So to summarize, uh, we present a dynamic analysis framework that makes it very easy to concisely write new dynamic analysis tasks and to recast existing ones. We provide multi-platform support without any effort from the developer. Um, we have actually good performance. We can express any analysis tasks and we also reduce observer effects and prevent interferences between the observed program and the analysis. Uh, related to this talk is a list of publications. Um, in particular, the last three are worth mentioning because they were created uh, within this uh, project. And the last one was just presented last week at Uppsala, which is a top-tier conference in programming languages, and it also received a Distinguished Paper Award there. <laughs>